Here we go folks, five years in the making. This is my ultimate NetDuma gaming router video where hopefully I'll be able to answer your question whether you should buy a NetDuma. You know, will it improve your performance? Will it give you a better Call of Duty experience? And we're kind of looking here at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Um, but you're saying, well, wait a minute, what about the five years? Well, because what we're also going to do is we're going to go back and look at the stats I created with my NetDuma for Modern Warfare 2019 and also way back to Black Ops 3 um, on the Xbox 360 of all things because that's kind of when I first got my NetDuma and started using it an awful lot. And that will give you some more in-depth data on these amazing gaming routers. Um, now, of course, you've got to think about what is a good experience in Call of Duty for you. So for me, it's going positive, playing the objective, if I'm playing objective base mode, calling in kill streaks or score streaks, being high in the order of my team. Um, winning is always good. And obviously, most of this is based on your skill and how much you practice and things like that. But a big chunk of it can be down to how good your connection to the game is. And generally, if you've got a better connection, uh, with Call of Duty, you'll have a better experience. And NetDuma routers, what they do is they give you that better connection because they allow you to control the overall internet bandwidth to the various devices in your in your household so you can make sure that you've always got a chunk of it for your multiplayer gaming. And most importantly for Call of Duty, they'll force Call of Duty to only allow you to connect to game servers that are close to you and or have a good ping so you're going to get a good connection to so you won't be allowed to connect say say if you're living in um, the uk it won't let you connect to a server in italy where you're going to have a bad experience because it's going to be laggy now i'll also say that you know just because you're on a net doom it doesn't mean you you won't have a good connection you know you can have a good connection most of the time in Call of Duty, especially when there's lots of people playing it, you know, when the when the Call of Duty is new, sort of uh, after Christmas as well, when there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people playing, it's very difficult to have a bad connection then. Um, but what the NetDuma does is it makes that uh, experience a lot more consistent. Anyway, so also I wanted to talk about, you know, having a good game this depends on an awful lot of things and as i said the connection is a significant part of that but it's still only a part you know are you playing on a map you know are you good on this map are you playing a game mode you like and you're good at are you using weapons that you're good with are the weapons good for this map and this mode do you and the team you're with play the tactics that are playing to your strengths and importantly and i think we forget about this sometimes are the enemy team playing in a way that plays to your strengths you know allowing you to shine also you know how tired are you how relaxed are you how focused are you are there any distractions that are going on and as you'll see from the stats in a minute it can often be the exception that proves the rule because on a map you'd like in a game mode you'd like with weapons you're good with with teammates who allow you to play to your strengths and really importantly enemies who play into your hands you can have exceptional matches on an average connection you know and that, that you know that's a fact of life so let's just take a quick look at my netdoomers gaming dashboard uh router dashboard sorry and it kind of gives you a little bit of an outline on how it works i mean go to their website to, to get the real lowdown but what you can see here this is the menu that allows me to control the internet bandwidth of allocated to various devices and this screen is the geo filtering one so this one that is the one that allows me just to connect to Call of Duty game servers within a fairly small geographical area, ensuring that I have that low ping and therefore a great gaming connection and hopefully a really good gaming gameplay experience. So let, let's take a look at the stats. So these are the stats for Cold War. So I played 40 games with 20 with the net doomer on, 20 with the net doomer off. I did 10 using the um, MP5 and the Pellington Sniper, and then I did 10 with the um, uh, M16 and the Pellington. Now, it's important to remember, I think, here, that I was playing Domination. I love Domination in Cold War. Um, and 
Um, Domination, traditionally for me anyway, is a game mode where I will throw my life away an awful lot because you're constantly playing the objective. You're constantly trying to get onto the B flag. Um, and this could have been, it could be reflected in, in some of these figures as well. So let's have a look. So for the first 10 games I played, um, my average KD um, was, let's have a look, uh, 1.56 for those 10 games with the net doomer on. And then another 10 games that I played after it with the net doomer off, my KD dropped to 1.25. I also, with the Net Doomer on, I won an average. Sorry, I won seven of the ten games, and with the Net Doomer off, I only won five of those games. So there's only a small difference there, but often that difference can mean the difference between having a good game and having a bad game, because it's often it's you know it's one or two kills that can often make that difference. However, what I would say is that it does make the game feel more solid when I've got the Net Doomer on, and you'll see that when we look at some of the older the older uh, stats as well. Also, we're going to be talking a little bit about skill-based matchmaking um, and Net Doomer as well towards the end of the video. And I think maybe that kind of affects some of these results as well. So if we scroll down then, so we look at when I then started using the M16 and the Pellington. For this series of, t of 10 games, I had an average KD of um, 1.25, so it dropped quite a lot actually. And funnily enough, with the Net Doomer off, I had a better KD of 1.36. However, what happened was this game here at the end, and this was my, you know, it was the, it was the, probably the 20th game in a row that I played, and I was a bit tired, and I knew it was the last game, and I just relaxed and went for it. And I had one of the best Call of Duty games I've ever had in my life. I went 46 kills with, with 18 deaths, which is... <laughs> Which is amazing, and this was this is with the M16 and with the Pellington sniper rifle. I was headshotting people and and having a great time. Also, it was on my favourite map. It was on um, Crossroad Strike, um, which I love that snowy map. Um, it's really good. It's a great snipers map as well. But you can also get in close and get on the B flag and get lots of uh, AR or SMG kills or shotgun kills and that sort of thing. If you take that game out of the average, my average was uh, actually 1.22, so it was lower than those previous games. And in this set of games, I got seven wins, and I also got seven wins uh, uh, with the Net Doomer on, and seven wins with the Net Doomer off. So there wasn't that big a difference. But I definitely feel that when I play with the Net Doomer on, the game feels that little bit a little bit uh, more solid now you will find if you do play with the net doomer on and you get a net doomer there are times when you are kicked from the lobby because the game's going i want to put you in this lobby and then the doomer says whoa you know the the ping's too long they're too far away and it kicks you out so that's so that's domination so let's let's go back in time let's look at the tests i did for modern warfare and with modern warfare 2019 i did t tests for tdm and free for all. So these are probably games, and there's a bit of domination as well. So these are probably games where um, gunfights are, are more important. You're going to be coming into gunfights um, on domination. You know, you, you play. Oh well, I, when I'm playing, I'm playing for the flag. So let's have a look. So Modern Warfare 2019. Then, when I was playing TDM with the, and how many games did I have? One, two, three. Yeah, I think it's ten again. Uh, with with the Net Doomer on, I got a KD ratio of 1.34 average and with the net doing we're off that dropped to 1.17 um, so you can see how you know I was getting a better KD in TDM with the net doomer on then if we scroll down to free for all um, I got a KD ratio of 1.068 and it was actually higher with the net doomer off at 1.125 um, Maybe because I'm not that good at free for all, you know, it's not my particular game of choice. Um, but you know, it shows you that different game modes put you in different situations. And one of the things possibly could be that within free for all, because I'm not that experienced of it, a lot of it is about uh, listening out and positioning um, and twitch skills, running around really fast and shooting people. And just you know, and that wasn't working for me. So let's go back even further in time and let's look at the big black ops. Um, three tests I did 
way back in the day on the Xbox 360. Played loads of games. It took me a while to remember how I'd done this. But so we've got um, Net Doomer on and Net Doomer off. So we've got T TDM and Net Doomer with the, just the LAN. Um, and what we can see here is that playing TDM on, X on the Xbox 360 way back in Black Ops 3 um, over the series of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 games. I had an, an average KD of 2.26, which is that's pretty good, actually. I think I was probably better at Call of Duty in those days. With the Net Doomer off, I had a KD of uh, 1.4, so significantly less. Um, nine wins, six losses um, with the te Net Doomer on, and nine losses, six wins with the net doomer off now what's interesting is this could be thinking about it, this could be maybe when i was the best at tdm in call of duty um where both this was really the only game i played you know when i think about black ops 3 i'd played um infinite warfare you know i came into back into uh, multiplayer gaming well started multiplayer game with infinite warfare and played it an awful lot but was was really crap and then with black ops three and when i started playing that um, and i also had a chance to, to practice on other call of duties as well i would put in so much time practicing and learning the maps and learning things so i was probably you know at one of my best experiences so let's sc scroll over let's have a look at free for all so free for all um with the net doomer on i had a kd of 1.65 or i guess we call that 1.7 and then with the net doomer off, I had a KD of 1.49. So again, um, that's a case of you know obviously I was doing better um, with with the net doomer doomer on. And what I will do is I will link in the description down below to my videos that I did about um, about these results, because in the video I go into a little bit more depth about it's not always about your KD. It's also about how many times you can get into the top five or the top three or actually get a win in a match. So, for example, in free-for-all with the Net Doomer on, I had three wins and four seconds. Whereas with the Net Doomer off, I had one win and one second. So although the KD seemed close, you know, you think, well, 1.7 and 1.5, that's only 0.2, isn't it? It's not much of a difference. But that difference meant that... I was in the top three an awful lot more, you know, and I won three times more games. So those those figures m might be sort of appealing to you, thinking, "Ah, oh, right, interesting." So let's a little talk a little bit about skill-based matchmaking now and how the Net Duma affects this. Now, I don't think back in the days of Black Ops Three there was. I don't think there was probably that much skill-based matchmaking going on. I think over the last couple of years, they've definitely um, fine-tuned how skill-based matchmaking works. And they've definitely made it so that your average player, like myself, has a better experience in Call of Duty. And you're less likely to get hammered um, in games. And you're more likely to do all right, occasionally have very good games. And I think they're very clever with this now. I think, although we'll never really know, I guess, unless someone hacks into the code how they do it with their matchmaking, I think probably what happens is their skill-based matchmaking system puts you in lobbies that allows you to do all right and have, um, say, above-average games sometimes, below-average games occasionally. And then I think every now and then it throws you into a lobby that will allow you to perform very, very, very well. And that then gives you the adrenaline buzz to keep playing the game. So if you ha if you have an amazing game, say once every 10 games, and then the rest of the games are, are all right, you're more likely to keep playing, aren't you? And that's uh, uh, exclusive Ace Guy, right, when he talked about skill-based matchmaking, said it's really more of a, a retention-based system. The idea is, is to keep players playing. Now, how does the Net Doomer affect this? Because the net doom was saying, well, actually, you're only allowed to connect to a certain number of servers that are fairly close. So that's limiting the amount of players that you connect to. And that, and it's very important to remember this, that cuts both ways. Because it means that if you're um, playing at a time of day when there's a lower population of players, 
say um, late, very late at night or say in the afternoon, things like that. Um, I tend to find that when there's a lower population of players, the players that are playing tend to be better because they're the really committed ones. When you're in that situation and there's more, the, you know, the average skill of the players is higher, the net doomer kind of fencing you in to only allowing you to, 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 to join um, a, a limited number of servers could be making the game more difficult to play. Because it could be that Call of Duty is saying, actually, I want to put you in a server that's a little bit further away because the players are going to be easier. And then at Doom is going, whoa, no, 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 no. Connection is king. We're going to put you into this server. So it puts you in the hard, you know, puts you into a harder lobby. However, because you do have that better connection, you may well be able to perform better. Now, at another time of day, when there's a lot more players around, and I think the more players that, that are available to play, the skill, the average skill goes down because you've got you've got um, a, a better, you know, you, you've got your normal players, say in the evenings or on weekends. Then this is where the uh, skill-based match. This is where the net doom really comes into its own because it's saying, well, we're only going to put you in in these really good connection lobbies, and we're going to make sure that you're going to have a good connection. Plus, if the game says, "Oh, wait a minute, you're too good for this. You should be in this lobby over there, that's got a bigger, got a, a longer lag and a worse connection." The net doom isn't going to allow you to do that, and it's going to say, "No, no, no, you're staying here with these players," and so then you'll have a good time. So, I've always advised people: if you want to have a good time in COD, try and play at times of the day when lots of people are playing. So in the evenings and at weekends, and avoid you know late at night, early in the morning, during the work week, you know during the day. Don't play, try not to play them because you're going to be coming up against harder players. And that's when the when the net doom will really comes into its own again because you know the the skill based matchmaking will um, will play to its strengths. Now there's something that the net doomer cannot get around. And that is team balancing. So unless you're playing free for all, what happens is when you load into a lobby, the game will look at who, look at the teams and look at the skills skill of the people on the team. And if there's a, a player that's very very good, they will put them on one team with all of the worst players, <laughs> so that the average, if you like, is the same between between teams. So what can happen is that with the net doomer, where you've got you know, it's, it's connecting you to a limited number of lobbies. So the choice of players it can put you in is limited. And say it's a high population time of day. So a lot of those players are below average. You could well find yourself as the best player in that lobby. So the, the game, so you're playing Domination, and it will dump all the worst players from the lobby on your team and all the better players on the other team. So you have to work very hard to get that victory and to do well. And there's nothing you can do about that because th th there is a strong argument that actually um, team balancing is the best way that Call of Duty should should do its um, skill-based matchmaking. And the fact that um, you should always have connection-based matchmaking to start off with. So everybody has a good connection in the lobby. And then as soon as you get into the lobby, you then look at the teams and go, okay, well, let, let's split them up so you've got an average skill level across them. So that can still happen there. So what? So what's the conclusion for all this? Well, I, th I think, you know, personally, I wouldn't give up my Net Doom for anything. I love the way it makes Call of Duty feel. I can still remember turning it on when I was playing Advanced Warfare and when I set it up for the first time and went, oh my god, all my bullets are hitting. And uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And I've used it ever since for the past sort of, five, six years. It doesn't mean you can't have a great game and perform amazingly without one, you know, because as I say, you can get a good connection. But I do think that if you've got the cash and you play a lot of Call of Duty, you know, maybe it's like your main game every year you buy the new Call of Duty, I think it's worthwhile investing in a Net Doomer gaming router. I really do. I honestly do. I think just as you would invest in a good controller or a good, you know, good headset to give you an advantage, you know, like a scuff controller or a 3D sound headset, just as you would invest in those or a good gaming chair or a gaming monitor. I think you should invest in a router like the Net NetDoomers, and they're pretty unique to be honest, that allow you to control the lobbies that you connect to and allow you to control the bandwidth in your in your in your house to give you the best multiplayer experience. So there we go. Hopefully that helps. If you've got any questions, of course, put them in the description down below. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.